Hello, hi everybody, and welcome to part two of my bug show prep. If you like watching experimentation, events, and that kind of thing, consider subscribing. Got lots of that coming up for you. So here's a little review of the last video. I went art supply shopping multiple times, gathering new supplies for this bug project, and then started experiments with the new supplies. And now we're gonna have a look and see how some of those experiments turned out. In the beginning, when I'm looking through the experiments, I'm pretty fixated on the fact the bugs should be shiny and smooth, completely forgetting the fact that when you zoom in on them, they're actually quite textured and bumpy. I'm not sure why I forgot that. today making a big mess so I'm just checking this I need to take my son to a vision appointment soon and um, I'm looking and it's it's been like 15 20 minutes and this is still wet which I think is mixed with this I'm gonna have to look back at the footage the theme of this episode and the, and the glue, not the glue, the masking fluid is definitely not dry at all. Like it's just a big glop everywhere, everywhere I put it. I've been running errands for about three hours and I'm so surprised that something is actually still wet. Like how? I don't know. It's not cold. It's not that cold today. Like the sun's streaming in and I'm bathes in sunlight right now and I, I don't I don't know how I did turn off my space heater when I left but don't know why it's still wet first turquoise stripe like it but when it's on this highly textured ground like I don't know if that looks bug like at all so this stuff in here I think created a smoothness that's very bug-like, even when you don't do it super thick. So I think that this is gonna, gonna work great. Maybe I can mix it, even if I'm not trying to make it thicker, but just to make it glossier. And on a highly textured surface, it doesn't really look very glossy, but on a less textured surface, it does. I'm not sure how much the high gloss really does. The high gloss is the top one here. And then the sparkles, I think, is the, the lower one. So like that's... That's the only one it's really showing up on. I don't know if, did I not do it there? Did I mix it wrong? Like I'm not seeing the, the sparkles. Oh, there they are, right there. Oh, it's the third one I did. Mm. Uh, looking back on the footage, let's focus on it. Yeah, I had it right. The first turquoise line is the high gloss and then the, the second turquoise line is the sparkles. The effect of the high gloss or the sparkles is pretty similar. It was really hard to tell the difference and it wasn't super visible unless it was in direct sunlight. It was also a lot more visible on a smooth surface. So when I added the iridescence, it's very subtle. I definitely think that, that it's super nice. I don't think it's getting the smoothness that I want it to. I'm really like in this, the aquapasto, I think that that is the most effective, to be honest. Oh my gosh. See, this is what's still wet. And I just dipped my hand in it. Okay, so where do we put anything shiny? Did I not? Pretty sure, oh, there it is. There it is. It's not super obvious, but this one looks shiny anyways. It doesn't need the addition of anything. That's probably why it didn't really show up. Makes sense. Did I add shininess here? Yes, it did. Kind of looks like a snail trail. <laughs> it's not super obvious. I'm not sure that it's adding for this particular project, but future projects. Glad to know how it works. I haven't scraped off the salt yet, but a lot of cool things happening here versus it, it's showing a lot more texture and everything than the aqua board did, so. Let's find the original aqua board. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Yeah, like there wasn't a lot of effect with the salt. It didn't do much. 
Anything you're seeing here is like mostly the, that stuff that I put on it, not the salt. Okay, so this is finally dry. And we're going to paint over this and see if we can even like pull this up. See how it works. And we're gonna paint over this. See how that works. So let's move this out of the way. What color do we want? What'll look pretty? chat a little bit about why I haven't researched any of these materials at all. So I often say like, oh, I probably could Google this and you, you might wonder why I never do. Um, part of it is impulsivity. That's honestly part of it. But another part is like, I actually am not someone who necessarily knows the rules unless, unless you directly tell me. And I feel like it's one of my strengths because I can often make up my own rules or make up my own way of doing things that's creative and inventive and a way that maybe um, works better than the original that people are generally doing. And so I like to spend some time playing with the material and experiencing it for myself. First of all, that's fun. It's just fun for me to do that. It's fun and rewarding to do that. Um, but even if like, even if it wasn't fun, I would still probably want to try to do that because if I spend time experimenting with the material and just seeing what it can do without any preconceived notions, oftentimes I might find more ways to use it than if I had just like started following the rules directly. So I just wanted to share that. And yeah, so like, this is not necessarily... I don't think I'm necessarily the person that's going to give you the best way to use a material. I'm just sharing like my process on how I learn how materials work and how I want to use them best. Right here I'm putting down and scraping off the material to practice making a relief. broke this part right here. Okay, I'm so surprised. I'm so surprised that the skinniest one came off and that it worked. It just felt like it was doing nothing. It bled um, underneath it a little bit right here. What's interesting is this one has dyed it a different color. So it's bleached it or it's turned it from it's turned into a more cream color. I don't know if that's going to show up on camera. This one here didn't. It seems the same. Same color and everything. Picked off part of it with my my thumb. And that particular one is the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. I don't know if that would happen with the other ones. We can try this one. I'm feeling optimistic. Wow, it's coming off really nicely. Now this is the aqua board the other one was clay board and this one has a rougher texture uh, i can't tell if it's turning it cream because this color is a little bit cream and i don't remember exactly what color it was before so i'd have to test that specifically but i, I think it's the same color and that, that worked beautifully that worked so perfectly i'm really glad i got these pens like this that worked so well okay so let's see this on it's still not dry. Okay. Um, is it dry enough? Okay, I think it's dry. Oh wow, I thought it had scraped off the paint. I 
I mean, it kind of did right there. If you can see right there, it's scratched, which I wouldn't have thought that the nib was hard enough to scratch it. I don't think I really want to work on this surface, but it does make some really beautiful abstract art. I think it would be really hard for any realistic work, but abstract stuff, it's super fun. I mean, and it gives a lot of dimension to it. I don't know if that dimension is showing up on camera though, but it's really beautiful. Okay, so let's start with this one. Just want to make sure that the glue doesn't remove. Yeah, see, it's removing a little bit of the cold press. I feel like there's a little bit of the paper that came off with it. I guess it's not paper, it's the, the ground with the artist's masking fluid. I suspect that this would be fine with it. This is just a little bit less harsh. This is the Daniel Smith watercolor. So I guess if you put it on heavy, you can, you can just pick it off. I mean, I guess I could damage my paper that way, but it would be a little harder. Okay, so let's see what happens here. And I feel like something came off with that. But I think in the center of this little piece here, there's some white. Okay, I think some came off here. So I don't know. You can see that there's some white in the center of this. And we shouldn't really see that. So it is damaging it a little bit, and that's something to keep in mind. So that's happening on the watercolor, Daniel Smith watercolor, uh, didn't seem to happen on the light dimensional. Uh, didn't really test that one. The core watercolor, I don't think, I think that that was the base actually. Did I not put it all the way? No, I mean, it's probably there. No, it's there. Yeah, so that was the core watercolor. I was, this part, this test isn't so great, I guess, <laughs> if, if I can't tell what material is what, but this is the actual aqua board. And then this is the watercolor ground that I put on top. So the test was on the watercolor ground. Okay, now this heart here. It's gonna happen. I did a combination of so basically use these two together. So the aqua pasto mixed it in with the Viridian and then used the masking fluid. And the results aren't amazing. Now granted, I still don't really know how to use the aqua pasto, but I mean, unless that's the effect you wanted, unless you wanted little pieces on top, this isn't great. It's not a great combination. Now here, I think this is dry. I did this last night, but I'm trying to create a relief. But what I would really like was for this to be smooth. And I think I'm gonna need to look up some cake decorating videos. I finally did look up last night how to apply watercolor ground and they weren't doing anything that I haven't already done. So, I think I need to branch outside of watercolor to learn how to decorate cakes. Okay, I'm removing the salt right now. That, that experiment was long done, but you know, we can, I think that's all. Is that all we have? We've got this, we've got this one, I've pulled everything off. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I feel like it removes some of the color underneath. And I want to do another test, like maybe do right here where I know. And I think I don't want to ruin that pen anymore. The rough texture of the aqua board is wearing down the pen. So we're going to do, because maybe it's an optical illusion. Maybe it's because this is dark than this. Oh, and cool. A nice way to do it. Well, that's a little bit lighter. Uh, an, an interesting way to do this would be uh, on the purple. And then we see if the purple comes off. What I like about this is it dries really fast. So I'll be able to paint this in a few minutes. So what have we learned? I mean, we've learned, I think the most important thing I've learned is that I've learned that if you make something thick, it may get damaged when it pulls up. And I, I think this is the most important test because 
this is these two products i'm sure i'm going to want to use them together and they're not really compatible and then this would be a substitute for this like if i just created the relief with this that's ideal um and then i wouldn't need this and i could just use this to make it shinier i do feel that the aquapasto makes it a little bit shiny and it creates a relief if i can't use it with uh, masking fluid that'll be a problem in a lot of areas so i need to keep these things in mind <laughs> this is all new information that i i'm really gonna have to focus on okay now my desk is an absolute um, disaster no surprise there let's choose so we've got purple here i think we need to do green on top my green is mixed with the aqua aqua pasto but not very much and let me take a seat hopefully it's dry i don't know how to tell if it is I think I'm getting somewhere, but this is making me really hungry. And this is not even stuff. I know I can't eat this. Like I can't eat any of this stuff. But I feel like maybe I've missed my calling as a cake decorator. <laughs> I'm going to lose my fingerprints doing this. I definitely think it's losing the pigment of the layer underneath. I think it's definitely lighter. So it doesn't really look purple as much anymore. And that is definitely a peach color, not purple anymore. So I don't think it went down to white, but it definitely removed some of the color. But what I have learned is that I could use my fingers, and in this case, I'm gonna use a rubber glove, to mold light dimensional ground, which is what I'm gonna try next. The cake decorators used a lot of different techniques. And what I want is like a smooth, I don't know if I should add water in here. I want a smooth edge. Yeah, that's not happening. Maybe they were doing it on fondant when they were touching the edge. That is not, that's not helping. Okay, so glove, maybe if I get it wet. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit. Let's try the pinky, because the pinky is a little tighter on my hand. I don't think that got me anywhere. Okay. I feel like I'm getting somewhere with this technique. So smooth the top and then, and then scrape off the edges. Ooh. Okay, let's start over. Let's say that we want This is our flat edge. I mean, I, I think that's what I'm going for. I'd like it to be a little cleaner, but it's kind of what I've got in mind. It might work better without any extra liquid in there. Great, oh, that worked. Not 100%, but. So what I would like is for this part to be like the center to be a little bit higher than the edges, but I'm willing to settle for flat and then a rounded edge. So if I could figure out how to do that, let's keep practicing. Well, that was cool. How did I do that? <laughs> okay, so we wipe it off at once. How's that gonna work in the middle of a, in the middle though? Okay, so let's try in the middle of, because my bug's gonna be in the center. 
I mean, that works really well. Okay, okay, I feel like I'm starting to get it here. So I'll use the initial edge as my Okay, so I can start the initial edge and then add more in the center if I want it to be a little bit more raised. Let's see if I can show you, and yeah, that doesn't show, but basically that is the thinnest area and that would be the thickest. That's, that's not actually what's happening here. We're getting close. I would have to flatten that out a little bit and I think it's getting too dry. So, it was easier to work with once it got a little bit drier, but now it's too dry. One thing I think about the light dimensional ground is it's got, oh, another way to remove color. Light dimensional ground has a lot of air bubbles in it that I've knocked out. So now it's becoming a lot thicker and it's different to work with. Bugs are really smooth. So this needs to be really smooth which I don't know if I'm ready to achieve that. I think I need a lot more practice. Okay, it's too dry. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to let it set. Scraping around the edges does something too. Okay, but it needed to be a little bit drier for me to be able to do that. Flatten it out, cut around the edge. Yeah, you know, that's not, that's not terrible. Okay, well, I'll let this dry now. Okay, so I had an idea and I forgot to film it. I decided to do a test of this and I was gonna put some of this where the butterfly was, but then I realized like, I don't know, I just I just picked this stuff up instead and then put it on as a base. Cause I remember that I had painted over it pretty successfully. And then I put in this um, masking fluid so here's what I've got so far and um, that's not really where I was thinking I'd go but I don't know but we'll see if it works the thing I haven't figured out yet with this is how to be smooth like how to not make lines but because this has lines it's it's fine um I didn't unfortunately it was already drying when I decided to make the lines so the lines aren't perfect I'm not very good at making perfect lines anyways but the reason why they're like so off is because it was already drying out and by the time I figured it out that you could do it um so if I was going to do it again I would like make the lines right away with the with the with the aqua pasto and I started mixing it off with a little green and then I just kind of switched over to green water so that's how you can see like oh it's a little bit green and then it's just the color that it is, which is a yellowish shade. And then I'm gonna paint on top of it. Doing this exercise was awesome because I got to practice on the aqua board, especially I was practicing the background, which would come in handy later. But the aqua pasto itself was pretty disappointing in how it ended up behaving. Despite the extra layer of the aqua pasto, this is decidedly way too flat. Thank you for joining me with my bug show prep and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Hello. Ow.